Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Um, I'd like to chat a bit about the Bones of Grace. Um, you see that? I'm in the room with the with the windows, so it's got quite a bit of a glare. But there is the cover for the Bones of Grace. This is by Tamima uh, Anam, and this was published back in 2016. Originally published in the Great Britain, from what I understand, and then um, later also here in the U.S. Um, 2016. Um, Tamima Anam is a writer from originally from um, Bangladesh. And so that's one of the reasons why I decided to read this novel. It was recommended to me by a person that I know on social media who um, sent me a message and thought that I would enjoy this this. Um, this novel last year she sent me this message and so you know i thought about it because ultimately this is a love story and that's not something that i i read a lot of and so whenever i was putting to my, together my list to read this year uh for 2017 i thought well maybe it was good you know to step outside of what I usually read and read a love story this year. And um, it also appealed to me that the writer was from Bangladesh, so I felt like, you know, we would have, uh, you know, it would be a different type of, a different voice. Um, and so I also, uh, you know, try to uh, incorporate diversity into into my uh, into my reading, into my, my authors um, whenever I can. So I thought, okay, I'm going to put it on my list and read it. And I'm really glad that I did because it turned out to be such a great read. Um, and there's, it turned out to be a love story as, as it, as I knew it was going to be, but there was also, you know, multiple other levels I thought, uh, that I, that I took away from the novel as well, which I will talk about more here in a bit. But what it's about is it's actually written sort of like a letter. Um, there, the main character, her, her name is Zubaida and she is, um, getting ready she's in uh as the story as the novel opens she's getting ready to go on an archaeological dig in pakistan um for a a, a prehistoric extinct way uh, transitional form of whale called an ambulocetus and this form of whale was when you know whales used to live on land and so it's a transitional fossil from when whales were you know first um moving they were on land still and then also um, living in in the, in the in water as well, and so it's a transitional fossil. So this is what she studies, and she's about to leave. But before, right before she leaves, like the week she's going to leave, before she's going to leave, she meets this guy Elijah, and they have this sort of electric, um, immediate connection and bond um and they spend the next week you know getting to know each other she meets his family etc but then ultimately um you know she does um need she she lets him know you know i'm about to go on this archaeological dig and she also lets him know the rest of her story which is that she is engaged to someone that she's planning on marrying after this dig back in bangladesh whose name is rashid and they have been um they were they knew each other as children their families are linked and so it's always been expected that they were going to get married and so that's her plan she plans on doing that so she lets elijah know this and um you know he is um of course um not you know terribly happy about that but you know sort of accepts it for what it is um she does go on this dig um then she um the dig is in pakistan it's in sort of a tribal area where it's which is politically unstable so the dig is called off at one point and she has to abandon the fossil there which causes her a great deal of distress um and she does go to bangladesh and marries rashid and she almost immediately regrets it because she stayed in contact with elijah um back in the u.s you know this whole time but she feels like you know that she has to um that her course was already set before and she cannot deviate it from it at this point without um uh, hurting a lot of people her family rashid and rashid's family who she has known her entire life um the other thing that sort of bothers her is the fact that she's adopted. Um, she has known this for quite some time, but anytime she tries to find out additional information about this, the families, uh, her family and Rashid's family, who knows about it, um, won't talk about it. And so she's sort of left with a lot of unknowns around that, which really alien feel, gives her, uh, leaves her with a sense of alienation from the families. Um, 
But then, um, you know, after she marries Rashid, a series of things happen that I won't go into here. Um, but she um, ultimately decides to go away to Chittagong, which is a different city. They live in Dhaka, the capital. They're gonna. She decides to go to Chittagong, which her in-laws have a house down there. So she goes down there to sort of be alone and get herself together. Um, and she. Um, takes a job working with a British documentarian who is doing a documentary on shipbreakers because in Chittagong there is this whole industry where ships are run aground there and then dismantled by the workers there and so um, she becomes involved with uh, with that um, and in the course of that um, documentary there is a cruise ship who the name of the cruise ship is grace and the cruise ship is um is brought there to be dismantled and so you know the bones of grace grace so um and then when she's in chittagong then um she renews sort of a contact with elijah and i won't give much more away about that at that point um uh, but she, um, while she's in Chittagong, she also runs into this other man named Anwar who runs into her on the street because of a case of mistaken identity, which is further explained in the book, but I won't give away because it would be a spoiler. But Anwar is another person who, like her, um, made this decision earlier in his life that he felt had disastrous consequences, not only for him, but for someone else, uh, a woman that he had been involved with. And so he is searching high and low for this woman um, who he had abandoned um, earlier in his life, I think about maybe like 10 years previous. And um, anyway, so their stories sort of intersect there in Chittagong. Um, so like I said, this letter, this novel is written as a letter to Elijah. So it's written, you know, it's got a real cool, um, sort of vibe to it in the sense that she's the only voice that we hear because it's written, um, you know, she's saying like, you said this and you said that. Um, and then when she's other characters, she'll say, you know, so-and-so said this. So it's, it's written in this way that you would write a letter to someone. Um, but, you know, a couple of few takeaways that I had from it, though, was about this, about her, um, her experience um, that's so universal, I think, to people um, in the fact that she was a very privileged person. She had, um, she had, her family actually loved her. She came from a loving family and even her in-laws loved her. They were uh, wealthy and she lived in this sort of luxury she was well educated even when she was at uh, harvard she got the there was one slot to go on this archaeological dig and she was the one who got it so she was even privileged in that sense you know that in that getting that slot and go and going on that archaeological dig ultimately took her away from elijah and um her family's love and the love of her in-laws was not enough to overcome this feeling of alienation that she had around um her origins and where she had come from which haunted her. Um, and so, you know, I think that was, that was really kind of interesting in how, um, sometimes people who, who appear to have it all, you know, are still, um, still struggle with this sort of existential questions, um, that, uh, she, you know, was trying so desperately hard to answer for herself. And, you know, ultimately, I think that's what the book was about other than, um, the love that she had for Elijah, obviously, was really a search for herself. Um, you know, she started out the the novel searching for this um, this walking whale, and and the whale uh, was a transitional form. You know, it had to take a risk um, and give up land. It had to give up the safety of what it knew to go in a direction that it that it. Um, that it didn't know, which was the ocean, um, and if it didn't take that risk, you know, it wouldn't have become what it became. And so, you know, this sort of, I think, uh, acts as a metaphor for um, for her her journey. And I love stories like that. You know, people who are really, you know, really thinking about their life and what kind of life they want to have and what kind of person they want to be. And that's ultimately what she's what she's doing. Um, you know, the other cool thing is about the Bones of Grace, you know, this this cruise ship that's being taken apart. Um, it brings her and, and, and Elijah and some other people, uh, very important people to her, together. Um, you know, by deconstructing that, um, deconstructing that ship, um, you know, she's reconstruct she's constructing actually the person she's going to, 
uh, by watching the deconstruction of that ship, she's not actually working on the deconstruction. But by watching that, she's actually constructing, you know, the person that she wants to be. So um, I, before the uh, before the um, chat's over, I just wanted to read a, a quick quote from the book because I feel like, um, you know, that this quote um, really sort of describes um, her, her this, the way that the story is written, uh, this letter to Elijah, um, and also a bit about her journey. So um, the quote is this, Worse, the more I wrote, the more I realized I couldn't change a thing. I couldn't sand down the rough edges of my words to you, nor make myself turn to look at you with your fingers wrapped around that bottle of honey, because that is how it happened, and there is nothing I can do to push my hand back into the black of our past. I have been tempted to bend the truth, to paint myself a little prettier. But I know you hate evasion more than anything, so I have been relentlessly, brutally truthful. I have placed my ugly, complicated heart within these pages, and although the shame hasn't passed, I tell myself at least I have been able to face it. I have been able to look at that woman in the eyes and say, yes, I was her. I was her and I am her. But this truth-telling in the end is not for me but for you. To bring you back to me, to give you something in return for the pain that I threw at you like a shower of stones. So cool. Yeah, about the honey. So she's what she's doing is she's reflecting on the last time she saw him. He's holding a he's holding honey, and I won't give away what happened there. It was rather heartbreaking. Um, but you know, she's writing this letter to him. Um, telling her story, telling by telling her story, she's telling you know their story together. But more than that, you know, she's just telling him. She wants him to know, um, you know, really the truth of what she was doing and what she was thinking, and you know, really where she was coming from. So, I'm really glad I read this. You know, I, it's probably not something I would have picked up because um, love stories. Um, I like, you know, I like some of them. Obviously, I like this one. So, um, you know, I maybe I need to um, give them a chance more often because um, it was really all about human love and human connection and um, a journey of self-discovery. And those are all things I can relate to. So until next time, take care. Bye.